Hello, my name is Lena Järvi. I'm associate professor here at the University of Helsinki. Today I will be giving you a short lecture on the impact of local meteorology on air quality. Air quality is highly variable in urban areas. Air quality is formed by different air pollutants and in urban areas these include both gaseous compounds such as nitrogen oxides, carbon monoxide, ozone or VOCs or they can be aerosol particles which can be measured by their mass such as PM2.5 or PM10 or their number per cubic centimeter. Their size distribution is important if we look of the health effects and also the dynamic properties that the aerosol particles are going to be having. In urban areas, quite often traffic is the largest emission source. As the emissions take place at the ground level, the emissions are close to those areas where also people spend their time. Also, the local concentration fields are highly dependent on time and space, and this is something that is partly caused by emissions, but also by other factors that we will be going through shortly today. Here you can see the diurnal behavior of NO2 measured in Copenhagen, Denmark, on two autumn days. On these two days, you can see how the amount of vehicles was very similar between the two days. The measurements were conducted on the roadside and on rooftop. You can see how on both of the days the traffic counts indicating also that the traffic emissions are very similar. However, if we look on the actual concentrations, we can see how on the first day they were much greater, especially on the roadside side, when compared to the concentrations on the second day. This difference cannot be caused by emissions themselves, but rather what is causing this difference is the meteorological conditions. On the middle plot you can see the wind speed on both days. On the first day the wind speeds were between 2 and 4 meters per second, whereas on the second day the wind speeds were increased to around 6 and 8 meters per second. Thus, it's not only the emission that it's determining the local concentrations of air quality components, but rather it's also the meteorological conditions, including the wind. Here, the effect of wind is demonstrated. You can see that there are two meteorological conditions, 2 meters per second wind and 6 meters per second wind, and the emission coming from a power plant being 1 puffs per second. What happens with this lower wind speed is that the puffs are less efficiently transported away from the urban area, meaning that after some time the concentration would be 3 puffs per volume. Whereas if you have greater wind speed, 6 meters per second wind speed, you can see how the puffs are more efficiently transported away from the city, leading to a concentration of one puff per volume. From here, you can see how the wind speed is impacting on the actual concentrations measured in an urban area. In addition of wind, also atmospheric stability matters. If there is an inversion layer taking place in the boundary layer, this means that the emissions taking place at the ground level are not able to disperse or be transported to higher elevations in the atmosphere, but rather the pollutants will be remaining closer to the ground. Let's next have more detailed look on the impact of stability. If we first think of an unstable boundary layer, where the temperature profile is such that greater temperatures are measured closer to the ground than at higher elevations. In this kind of boundary layer, large eddies can be formed and these mix the air very efficiently through the whole boundary layer. This means that any emission taking place either from traffic or power plant is easily mixed to the whole depth 
of the boundary layer and the concentrations at the ground level would be remaining smaller. In the case of stable boundary layer, an opposite phenomena will take place. In this kind of boundary layer, the temperature profile is such that greater temperatures are measured higher in the atmosphere and smaller temperatures closer to the ground. This kind of temperature profile or stability structure prevents large-scale turbulent motions and it will prevent the emissions taking place at the ground level to be mixed higher in the atmosphere. In this case, transport of emission taking place from a power plant will be transported long distances from the stack. And alternatively, if there is a traffic emissions taking place very close to the surface, these emissions will remain closer to the surface and they will not be transported to higher elevations. In this case, the air pollutant concentrations at the ground level tend to be the greatest. In neutral boundary layer, there is no strong temperature gradients in the boundary layer. In this case, dispersion of both power plant emission and traffic emission is roughly equal in both vertical and horizontal directions. The power plant emission in this case will get so-called cone shape pattern in where the emission is dispersed to greater volume the further away from the actual emission source you are going. Similarly, the traffic emission is dispersed away from the surface but not as efficiently as in the case of unstable boundary layer. In addition of these three basic vertical profiles or atmospheric stabilities, we can also consider a case where there is a near surface inversion, meaning that close to the ground you have a stable boundary layer and on top of that you have unstable boundary layer. In this case, a near surface emission like emission coming from a vehicles or traffic, will remain at the surface, making the air quality worse. But on the other hand, if there is an elevated emission, for example, from a power plant, this will remain higher in the boundary layer and it will not be mixed to the ground level. Or we can consider a situation where you have higher level inversion. In this case, close to the ground, you can have neutral or unstable structure of the boundary layer and on top of that, you have a stable boundary layer. If both the elevated and ground level emission take place below this higher level inversion, it indicates that both of the emission plumes will be remaining close to the ground, making the air quality worse. These examples show how the atmospheric stability impacts on the dispersion of air pollutant emission and at the same time how it matters whether the emission is at the ground level or elevated level.